Well, good morning, Bridges Nashville. From wherever you're watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, listen, to get the most out of House Church, I want you to fully engage with this, cut off all distractions as we worship together here in just a moment, really participate in that. We're gonna have the lyrics at the bottom of the screen today. During the message, the scriptures are gonna be on the bottom of the screen. And for all of our announcements, you can also go to bridgesnashville.com slash house church. I also want you to know this week we're launching a brand new prayer, not app, but application. Okay, you can text the word prayer to our phone number, 615-436-2378. And our prayer team is gonna be on the other line, ready to pray with you, whether that's over text or by phone, whatever you prefer. So if there's anything you need prayer about, make sure to text prayer to 615-436-2378. And lastly, we're gonna be taking communion at the end of our time together. So find a piece of bread, find a cup of juice so that you can participate in that sacred moment with us. Let's worship God together. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh, there's no one like you, God. Come on, who breaks? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much strong? the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings come on sing it out this is amazing grace this is a
worthy of all praise. Amen. This next song comes from Psalm chapter 8. Sing, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look, when I look into the sky, I see the touch of an artist's hand. I see the world that you design. Here in all, I humbly stand. Verse 2, dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire spreads ahead of him and burns up all his foes. His lightning flashes out across the world. The earth sees and trembles. We serve an awesome God. And no matter what it is that we face, and no matter what terrors may come our way, everything has to bow at the name of Jesus. Sickness has to bow. Coronavirus has to bow. Whatever it is that you find yourself facing today, remember that God is greater. And we're going to sing about the name of Jesus right now. Everything trembles at the name of Jesus.
bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. There 
is so much power in your name. At the sound of your name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And we declare that today, that you are high and lifted up. Even in our current and present circumstance, you rule and you reign. And we thank you that where you are, God, is holy ground. And so right now, as we worship you and we invite you in, we thank you that this is holy ground.
Well, what a difference a week makes. Uh, I miss seeing your faces. I miss hearing your voices at the listening room. I cannot wait till we can gather in person again. But I'm also hopeful. I've gotten emails and texts and seen stories of the church being the church. Instead of retreating in fear, we've been responding in love. Listen, today's message is about giving, and we know that resources aren't the only thing that you can give, so just right up front, I want to share about three specific attributes of the kingdom that you can give today. Right now, our world needs peace, hope, and love. Number one, give peace. In in John chapter 20, the disciples are gathered together, and they're afraid. This is right after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And the disciples were afraid of the Roman officials. They were afraid of an uprising of the people. They didn't know what to do. Much like our situation today, they were uncertain of the future. And Jesus appears in their midst. And in just a few verses, he says, peace be with you twice. When Jesus says something one time, we need to pay attention. When he says it twice in a short time frame, I think he has something there for us. Verse 21 says, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Listen, Jesus gives us peace and he sends us out to give peace to the world around us. Number two, give hope. 1 Thessalonians 4.13, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. We are not of this world. We are not like people that don't have hope. We have the hope of glory in Christ Jesus. So spread that hope on your social media feeds, in your interactions with people, as you're calling people, spread hope. It's like my friend, Pastor Todd Bishop in New York says, be a hope dealer. And lastly, give love. John 13, 35, Jesus says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We are a people marked by love for such a time as this. So find simple ways to love people. Uh, Call four or five people in this next week. Uh, Give them some hope over the phone. Check in with somebody. Listen, I'm a text person, an email person 99% of the time, but right now, I'm a phone call person. There is something contact driven when you hear the human voice. So give somebody a phone call, let them know that you're thinking about them. If you know somebody that's at high risk of the coronavirus, give them a phone call and just give them some encouragement. If you know somebody that's in the medical field, give them a call, let them know you're thinking about them and you're praying for them. This is the time for the church to be the church. Nothing shines brighter than the hope, peace, and love that we have in Jesus Christ. Well, we are in uh, week three of our series, Gather, Grow, and Give, and today's message is titled, To Give is to Live. Listen, when we planned out this series months ago, we never could have guessed that it would come at a time of global crisis, but this series is all about the strategy behind becoming a full-fledged follower of Jesus Christ. I think God saw it in advance, and He knows if there's anything we need to be right now, It's true disciples of Jesus. Week one, we talked about gathering, and it came at a time right when the quarantine was starting to take place. We might not be gathering in person at the listening room right now, but we're gathering together online. I think now more than ever, we are finding that we can stay connected even if it feels like we're not physically connected. 
Last week, Pastor Caleb talked about growing and seeking God in your daily life, specifically through prayer. He talked about the power of the Lord's Prayer. And if you missed any part of that message or the previous message, I want to encourage you, go to our YouTube page, subscribe, watch those messages, and be encouraged today. You can also listen to our podcast. Right now, we're creating even more content than just the Sunday talks. And so get as much as you can off of the content that's being created online. Subscribe to our podcast. This week, we're going to talk about that third G in our 3G strategy, give. The response to the gospel, the fruit of a disciple, is a life marked by giving. James Cash Penny started his first business in 1902. It was called the Golden Rule Store. He found a lot of success, and it would eventually grow into over a thousand stores across the country. He would later rename that store after his own name, J.C. Penny. Uh, But soon after the Great Depression, uh, J.C. went into a depression of his own. He lost a ton of money after investing in some bad advice. He checked himself into a sanatorium in Michigan in 1932. And while there, he was wandering the halls one day. He found himself stumbling into the chapel. And that's when he heard the words of a hymn that he had grown up singing. The words of the hymn say, Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. All you need, he will provide. He will take care of you. James found his way back to God and back to sanity. He ended up living a full life to 95 years old, serving God and giving away the majority of his wealth to over 100 organizations across the world. In fact, by the end of his life, he was giving away 90% of his income and living off of only 10%. We call that a reverse tithe. As I shared at the top, of this message. We give much more than just through our resources, but today I do want to talk about giving in a financial sense, because let's be honest, everybody uses money. Some don't have enough of it. Others have more than they know what to do with. If that's you, send me an email. Uh, Money doesn't just represent purchasing power. It represents your life. Think about this. When you work a 40-hour job, you get paid off of those 40 hours. You're getting paid for giving 40 hours of your life to your work. And when you give of your finances, you give of your life. In fact, Scripture says you give of your heart. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, the Greek word for treasure here isn't some metaphor about what you value. It actually translates into wealth. Uh, Sarah and I keep a pretty good eye on our finances by sticking to a budget. And it's interesting nowadays that most of the banking apps actually have uh, the capability of giving you pie charts and graphs to see where you're spending your money. You want to know what has your heart? See what has your paycheck. Uh, Finances are a necessity in life. And yet in the church world, people mostly get uncomfortable and avoid talking about it. I think that's a missed opportunity. Contrary to popular belief, money is not the root of all evil. We can talk about this. Uh, 1 Timothy 6.10, here's what it says. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. It's the love of money that the scriptures tell us are evil. In fact, Jesus talked more about money and possessions than nearly anything else in his ministry. Money is mentioned more than 800 times throughout the Bible. I can offer you this. Either you own your possessions or your possessions own you. Jesus said in Matthew 6 that you can't serve both God and money. When you love one, you end up hating the other. Uh, Today, I want you to come away knowing that, like Mark Batterson says in his book, Double Blessing, we're not blessed to raise our standard of living. We're blessed to raise our standard of giving. I've heard a hundred preachers say it this way. If God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. So today we're going to talk about the perspective of giving, the joy of giving, and the fruit of giving. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. There's a perspective of giving. Generosity is gratitude in action. Being thankful focuses on what God has given to us and not what we don't have. Uh, Giving helps us enjoy what we have instead of wanting what we lack or what we think we lack. See, the opposite of gratitude is entitlement. The opposite of generosity is greed. 
When we give of our finances, it's showing God appreciation for what he's blessed us with. Much like when you go to a restaurant and you tip a server to show them appreciation for how they've served you, when we give of our resources and what God has blessed us with, we're literally telling God we appreciate him for what he's given to us. And you cannot give anything that God hasn't first given to you. John 3, 27, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. Tells us in the book of James that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Now there's two different types of perspectives when it comes to money. The first is a scarcity mindset. Uh, This says that we'll never have enough, that God can't really provide our every need. We're afraid that we're not gonna be taken care of. It's honestly a lack of trust. This type of thinking suffocates our faith and it makes us wanna hoard everything to ourselves. I don't know if you've seen the show Hoarders on cable TV, but it is not a pretty sight. That's the perspective of scarcity. Now, the other perspective is an abundance mindset. Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 50 says that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There is not a need that he cannot provide for. I wanna encourage you right now because I know that many people are already being affected by the economic downturn due to COVID-19. I also want you to know that God is still Jehovah Jireh. He is still our provider. He never loses the ability to supply our needs and take care of his creation. Check out Matthew 6, 25 and 27. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Listen, when we get a perspective of giving, we change from a scarcity mindset to an abundance one. God isn't limited on his ability to bless and provide for our needs. When we give, it shows God that we trust him. Check this out. Giving shows that you trust the God of resources more than making a God out of resources. That is the perspective of giving. Number two, the joy of giving. Hey, it's just fun to bless people. Jesus said that it's better to give than to receive. Generosity is at the heart of miracles. Just before Christmas in 1933, a few years into the Great Depression, a letter appeared in the newspaper of Canton, Ohio, telling people who had fallen on hard times that they could send letters in to a man by the name of B. Verdot. A bank account had been opened under that name with $750. The article promised a check to 75 families in need for $10 each during the holidays. Now, the strange thing was that in Canton, Ohio, there was no one by the name of B. Verdot. It wouldn't come out until nearly 70 years later that the man who had actually given away a small fortune during the Great Depression was Sam Stone, a Jewish Romanian immigrant who knew all too well what it was like to fall in hard times. It's one of the coolest secret Santa stories of all time. And when you give without an agenda, not needing the credit, and not needing to tell the world on social media how great you are, uh, you open the door to God's blessing. Matthew 6, 3 and 4. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. It's fun to give. And and listen, you cannot outgive God. Uh, Some of the most generous people that I've met are also some of the most joyful And some of the most blessed people I know can't stop giving because they've discovered the joy of giving. Number three, the fruit of giving. Generosity is a seed planted and a seed bears fruit. Finances in the kingdom always yield eternal dividends. At the end of the day, giving is simply a stewardship issue. We only get one crack at this life and what we do with what we've been given will determine our legacy. Can I say that again? What we do with what we've been given will determine the legacy we leave behind. In Jesus' most famous message, the Sermon on the Mount, he tells us, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. When you give towards the kingdom, you are laying up treasures in heaven. When the gospel is advanced, you're investing in eternal destinies. Uh, During our fundraising season, before we launched Bridges Nashville in September of 2018, Pastor Stephen Blandino down in Fort Worth, Texas, didn't even know who I was, but he saw an article that came out about the vision of Bridges Nashville. He asked me to come and lead worship at his church. I had no idea that I'd be walking out with a check for $15,000. That investment helped us launch as a church, helped us become a place where people have made Jesus Lord of their lives. Others have discovered purpose, found community, and stepped into a whole new life. Many who are watching today. It all goes back to that initial investment in the kingdom of God. We're called to be a generous people. So let me bring this plane in for a landing. How can we take a practical step into giving? Well, tithing is a baseline. The word tithe literally means tenth. If you haven't heard of that word before, it actually first appears in the book of Genesis when Abraham, the father of our faith, gives a tenth of his spoils of war to the priest Melchizedek. Tithing is a biblical practice that believes God can do more with 90% than you can do with 100% on your own. Tithing is trusting. And it's the only principle in all of Scripture where God actually dares us to test him. Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, now, some people say that tithing was just for the Old Testament and that under the new covenant in Christ Jesus, it's obsolete. The problem with that theory is that money has always been an issue of the heart, and Jesus asks for our whole heart. With the rich young ruler, he said, give it all away, Matthew 19, 21 and 22. Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Here's the tragedy. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus also praised the woman with the alabaster jar for pouring her expensive perfume at his feet in Mark chapter 14. In fact, Jesus said, wherever the gospel is mentioned, your name will also be mentioned because of your extravagant generosity in worship. In that day and age, that jar of perfume would have been worth a year's wages. Now, here's what I love about that story. In verse 8, Jesus says, she did what she could. She did what she could, and that's what he asks of us. Do what you can. See, Jesus didn't get rid of giving. In fact, he wants us to understand we don't have to give, we get to give. So what is one step that you can take today towards a life that gives? It might not be giving 10% of your income as a tithe right now, but you can take a step. Do what you can. A Bridges Church is an engine that runs on generosity. Listen, your giving turns into mission. Your giving advances the gospel. Your giving turns into blessing. Generosity builds faith. Anytime you don't give, you miss the opportunity to build faith in your finances. And anytime you lose the opportunity to build faith, you lose. Don't take God out of the equation. Whenever you bring God into the mix, whether that's in your health, with your family, your workplace, your relationships, you're trusting God to do more than what you can do on your own. The same is true with our finances. Let's trust him and be a people of generosity. To give is to live. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful for every good and perfect gift that you've given to us. We know that there's nothing we can give that you haven't first given to us. Help us to understand this and get a perspective of giving. Lord, help us to find the joy of giving and in turn, let us see the fruit of giving. God, one of the greatest acts of giving of all time happened when you gave your son for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Thank you for that great gift. God, it's only because you are generous that we can reflect that generosity. Help us to love our neighbors, to give to those in need, to fuel the kingdom, to see your gospel advanced in this day and age. 
And right now, I just want to pray if there's anyone who's watching that hasn't taken that step of faith and put your life in the hands of the Savior, right now is a great time to do that. I want to pray for you specifically. God, would you just meet whoever's watching this that doesn't yet know you? Would you wrap them in your love? Would you show them that they are a child, a son or a daughter of the Most High God, that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that you've come to give us life and life more abundantly? Would you reach them right now in the mighty name of Jesus? Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, please email us or comment here on this live stream. We would love to reach out with you, connect with you. I want to pray with you over the phone. God is doing amazing things right here and right now. Let's continue to worship this morning.
I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will. Hey, every week at Bridges Nashville, we take communion together as a church. This week is no different as we're gathered. We're going to remember Jesus and the sacrifice that he took on the cross. In Luke chapter 22, verses 19 and 20, it says, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So if you have the elements this morning, go ahead and take your cup of juice and bread in hand, and we're gonna take the elements of communion together today. The bread represents the body of Christ that was broken for you. Go ahead and take of the bread. The juice or whatever you have this morning represents the blood that was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let's go ahead and take this together. Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you that by your body being broken and your blood being shed, we have forgiveness of our sins today. Help us to never forget the wonder and the majesty of the cross and the resurrection life that we have because of you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just a couple announcements to close out our time together this morning. Uh, first off, I just want to remind you of a few things that we're doing right now to give you a little bit of spirit food during your week. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock Central Time uh, on our Facebook page and on our Instagram Live, we're doing a Message Monday. This is where we recap the message, dive a little bit deeper. You can ask your questions about the message. It's a great time to engage in what we've learned about here on Sunday. Every single day, we do devotionals on TikTok. These are 15 to 60 second devotionals coming out of the Word of God to charge you up and get you fired up for your day. On Instagram Live on Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 7 p.m., we're doing what we call worship 
Leader Takeover, Worship Leader Takeover. And uh, at Bridges Nashville, we've got about a dozen or so worship leaders. They are joining us from their homes and uh, coming into your home via technology and just leading you in a short time of worship. So be sure to tune into that. And then on Friday mornings uh, on Instagram Live, eight o'clock, we're calling it Coffee with the Pastor. This is a time where you can just check in with me or Pastor Caleb or Jamia. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how we can pray for you. We're gonna also give you a quick devotional to charge up your day. I also wanna let you know that we just launched Kids of Bridges Instagram page. And uh, this is where your kids and parents, you can tune into. You're gonna get a little bit of teaching and lessons. Uh, they're gonna arm you with uh, different ways that you can disciple your kids and engage them during this time of quarantine. Follow along on that page, Kids of Bridges. And uh, Molly, who is our kids director, is doing a great job keeping all the kids engaged in this time. We also launched bridgesnashville.com slash kids. A lot of worship, Bible stories, and lesson plans for you there. Uh, if this is your first time watching, you can go to bridgesnashville.com slash connect, fill out a short connect card, and let us know how we can get in touch with you over this next week. Lastly, giving. Uh, the message today was all about living a life marked by giving. If you want to give, you can do that at bridgesnashville.com slash give. All of your donations are 100% tax exempt, and they all go towards advancing the kingdom. We give because he first gave to us. Hey, one more time. If there's anything that you need prayer for, text the word prayer to 615-436-2378. Our prayer team is available to pray with you right now. God bless. We love you guys. Can't wait to see you. Join us next weekend for another episode, if you want to call it that, of Online House Church. Much love.